Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Let's go back to the summer of 2023. I had heard that Spot Whiskey was going to be releasing a new version of one of their wine finished limited edition whiskeys. Now, so what they do is they take the Spot Whiskey, they finish it in some barrels. We'll talk about all that in a little bit. But as you probably know and probably see frequently, I am a big fan of Spot Whiskeys. If you look, sorry, if you look behind my uh, single barrel release from Barrel Whiskey and my single barrel release from Stellum, and of course, the single barrel release from the Australian company, Starward. If you look behind those, you'll see a whole bunch of different spot whiskeys. And I love them. Um, it definitely tickles that part of my brain that likes to collect things. So, you know, that is kind of where I'm at. But I couldn't get my hands on it. So I actually reached out in my local Discord, like the whisk, we call it the Whiskord. And uh, Christine helped me out by finding one in her local area, sending it over. And I should have reviewed it then. But I'm getting to it now. I wanted to kind of wait a little while because my initial impressions of this whiskey where I didn't love it. And I knew, I knew, I knew that if it opened up a bit, I might like it more. So, decided to do it for Irish Whiskey Month in 2024. Many months later, let's see how it did. Greenspot Quailsgate is the third entry into the Wine Geese series. Now, Wine Geese is an actual term that was coined back in 2005. And the idea is Irish immigrants and exiles left Ireland after the Williamite Wars, um, a specific defeat in the Williamite Wars, and they left the country and they went to different places in Europe or in today's case, British Columbia. And then they started wineries and vineyards and they sell their own stuff. So the idea is coming back together and celebrating that unique Irish heritage that they all share and making something together. You might remember the reviews I did on the Chateau Leoville Barton and the Chateau Montalena. Uh, both of these, I hate to say it, but I mean, whatever, this is a review channel. They didn't do it for me. I have come to learn that I'm kind of in the minority there. A lot of people really like these, especially the Chateau Montalena. I'm sorry, the Leo Ville Breton. Um, actually, both of them, really. So when this came up as an option, I kind of want to keep giving them chances. If they put out 40 more of these from different uh, vineyards, I will absolutely be buying them. But with the Quails Gate, I kind of went in with my expectations set a little bit lower. But let's talk about what's in this bottle. This is a no age dated whiskey, but that's totally fine because that's not really the point. What they're trying to do here is highlight the finish, which is going to be a Pinot Noir from Quailsgate. And so they take the normal green spot, which is about six years old. It's in ex-American oak and uh, ex-sherry butts. And they take all that and then they finish it for 16 months in this Pinot Noir cask from Quailsgate. All of this is then bottled at 46% which is similar to the rest of the finished whiskeys, but 6% higher than the regular green spot. Let's go into the nose. Everything about this way that this smells is reflective of the cast that it's finished in. Usually I find that finished whiskeys reflect themselves mostly on the nose and often in the taste, but almost always in the nose. And a lot of times you do get a difference because you've got the way it tastes from the barrel, versus the way it smells kind of from whatever was left in the previous barrel that's been finishing it. In the case of this, this is red wine all day. The only thing it's really bringing from the regular green spot is probably some apple, but let's go through some of the main notes that we're picking up from the Pinot Noir. So very heavy on berries. We've got cherry, we have raspberry. Then there's kind of this like berries and cream concept that's coming up, and I'm considering this from, it smells a little bit like that, frankly, like strawberries and cream but also a smoothness and this just well-refined, uh, well-rounded smell that, that is just making me think it's like creamy and smooth. Apple, of course, like I mentioned, but then pear as well. Pear is very heavy here, but it's after the berries for me. And then it kind of finishes up with some vanilla, which you're getting from the American oak. Let's go ahead and get into the taste. With a nose so sweet, you might wonder what the taste is like. So let's go ahead and find out. Cheers. Here's some good news. The flavor on this opened up brilliantly. I was very worried when I initially bought this, and we'll get more into this in the overall. I do want to focus a bit more on the taste here, but I will just say I was nervous with the $100 that I spent on this, but the taste is, after a period of time, finally, like, at a great spot. So, what am I tasting? The first thing that hits you, <laughs> I'm like salivating, it's, it's uncommon for that to happen so much in a video. Um, so, warm sugar is heavy here. In, uh, by heavy, I mean, sorry, prominent. Uh, it is the first thing I'm tasting. It's just this warm, nice, brilliant sugar. But then you're followed by a lot of fruits. You have a apples, very much on pear. It's like a, uh, like a very sugary pear, almost like um, 
<laughs> this is kind of not really gonna apply to actually you know i'm gonna actually i'm gonna keep it with pairs but i'm also gonna go i make these things i can't get b-roll because it's still kind of like winter outside and i don't feel like getting on the grill but they are these peaches and a friend taught me this basically you cut a peach in half you take out the pit and then you pour brandy into the little hole and you throw it on the grill and you let that brandy kind of warms up and it seeps into the into the peach that is uh just amazing <laughs> and it tastes a lot like that if you use the right brandy and i don't know much about brandy so i can't really recommend one but like if you ever find yourself with some peaches just do this you will be amazed at how good it is all right anyway back to what we're talking about here so warm sugar we have pears we have brandy peaches uh, there's vanilla for sure on the taste. Let's have another sip because I kind of got carried away thinking about delicious peaches. Now, I'm going to say something that's a little contradictory. The flavor here is very, it's nice. It's well-rounded. It tastes very good. Um, it's almost like a step from one flavor to the other, but they've milled into each other rather than just being a sharp finish, sharp middle, sharp, um, sorry, sharp start, sharp middle start, sharp finish boy um but what this also has is that slight bit of pot still i call it spice but basically it's like that little bit of copperiness that you get in pretty much most irish whiskeys that are pot stilled it's not a bad flavor some places don't do it well and it overpowers and it makes you taste like you're just eating copper i guess or licking copper this doesn't have that what it does is it gives like a more solid backing to finish off after all of those nice fruit notes overall very drinkable <laughs> this whole thing to say this tastes pretty good right? so let's go into the overall here with this whiskey this is a hundred dollars roughly you might be able to find it uh, you'll probably find it maybe like 110 you might be able to find it slightly cheaper but overall you're going to have to search for this one because it was a limited edition it's not being made anymore and it might be a little tough to find is this worth having first off i'll just say if you are a person who enjoys spot whiskeys you will really really grow to like this um, but bear in mind, for me personally, I did not like this even really much at all as soon as I opened it. I had to let this one breathe for a little while. So, in my opinion, a $100 whiskey should mean something. But I will also say that a limited edition Irish whiskey from Spot Distillery often is $100. So, is this in line with the other two finishes? I probably think it's the best way to compare these. Which of these three would I like to have? Well, I will tell you that I would like to do a head-to-head -head of these on my next live stream, which I'll be planning very, very shortly. Um, so we're going to find out for sure. But my mentality tells me, or my, my memory tells me, that this one's probably my favorite of the three. And that totally goes to what I said earlier about me just kind of not loving these two. Um, but this one really opened up. So, in my opinion, is this worth a buy it? Uh, only if you're a spot whiskey collector. I... I think it probably could have been if you saw it on a shelf and it was properly priced. I suspect that if you tried to buy it now, you might have to pay a little bit of a premium. Personally, I would feel bad spending over 130 on this, um, knowing the qualifications that get it up to that price. If somebody's trying to charge like 150, just tell them to screw off, right? <laughs> but if you can get it for 100 and it's something that you're into, this is a really good addition to my collection. And I think you should consider putting this on, on your shelf. So I'm going to give it a rating of buy it. Uh, with the expectation that if you are at a whiskey bar and they have it on the menu, that would be a better choice to try it there, enjoy it, not spend a fortune on it, and go from there. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Cheers. I usually say night, so we'll just go with week. <laughs>